Welcome to Criminalusion.com. I'm Stephen Burns, and I would like to continue this exploration of the use of selections and levels to enhance our photographic image. The key to mastering Photoshop is mastering selections. Selections and masks are exactly the same thing. Now, we're looking at the image here. We have several compositional elements that are competing with our primary subject, which is our concrete pillar, which is the, the leftover of a pier. And this was taken in Santa Cruz, California. So the background is too bright. It also has a sharpness to it that I think we can blur down to give it less competition with our primary subject matter. Let's go ahead and darken it down. We're going to utilize, utilize the levels that way. And then also we have the foreground information that is actually brighter than our primary subject and competing for attention. So let's go ahead and modify this image a little bit and see if we can improve upon it. Let's go ahead and apply selections. Now my background is pretty much a single color. So I'm going to go ahead and use my magic wand, select it, hold the shift key, continue to select, option and space bar together and drag to the right will allow you to zoom in with subpixel levels zooming. Now, since we're in a magic wand, I'm holding down the shift key to add to my selection. Drag this over to the right a little bit. Hold the shift key to add to my selection. Now, if I, if I spill outward, I simply hold the option key and do it again, and it will take away. Now, shift add, and I'm gonna do the same here. It's done. And let's go over to the right-hand side. Move this all over a little bit, and that is done. All right. So let's inspect the rest of the image. Zoom out a little bit. And we've missed some of these areas down here in the deeper blue ocean. I'm going to switch my selection tools now. Now, selection tools is all they are. is just to create the areas in which to, to apply to your image so that Photoshop will apply its commands and tools only to these areas. And I'm going to make the quick selection tool. I don't need to hold shift because the nature of the tool is basically to to work like a paintbrush and to continue adding to your subject matter. Now I've spilled out a little bit or spilled in toward my, my, my structure. So I'm going to zoom in closer. Let's go ahead and double click on the layers and pull this on over. On the right hand side, I'm going to make the brush a little smaller hitting the bracket key to the left. That bracket to the right makes the brush bigger and the left makes it smaller. That's on the right hand side of the P key using the bracket to the right and left and hold the option key I'm going to go ahead and take away those pixels that I didn't really care about now holding the space bar I have my little move tool I'm going to inspect the rest of the image and that looks pretty good even on the inside here so I might uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit there there we are let's go ahead and take that away with I don't necessarily want to keep it and I'm gonna come back over to here hold the option key and make sure that these edges are accurately selected. Zoom it down just a little bit so you can see what we're doing. And let's go ahead and paint this in. So this tool is learning. It's actually trying, it's actually remembering what it is you actually wanted to select. All right, so it's, it's telling us that, oh, you actually wanted to stop right here along this edge. So let's go ahead and bring it down. Hold the option key to pull the emerging ants back away because I don't want uh, the sand to be selected holding the option key down there we are that looks pretty good I'm gonna come over to the right inspect it all the way around and I believe this is gonna work pretty well so let's go ahead and option and space bar together I'm going to pull to the right and what I've already already done is I created a selection for my background now I've put in so much hard work into this selection let's actually save it okay select menu save the selection let's go ahead and call this background and click OK have new channel will be selected automatically we're going to click OK now what I would like to do next is select the foreground information as well as is uh, create a selection for the stone pylon by itself so what I'm going to go ahead and continue to use my quick editing tool option key right click and hold make your mouse a little bit bigger you can drag it left to right it'll resize your brush 
and go ahead and select the rest of this in the bottom done all right it's real fast and quick zoom in close to make sure it's accurate bring it down a little bit smaller hold the option key to pull it away from the stone again it spilled over just a little bit so I'm gonna pull it away from the background option there it is it did it okay so what we have now is everything selected but the stone structure so select menu Y because we're gonna modify a selection Sh inverse or shift command or control I and we have the inverse so if we come right over to here I want to get rid of these selections here so the fastest way I'm going to do is select the rectangle hold the option of the alt key that'll take away those selections and we're done with it I missed one right over here in the top bottom left hand corner and it's done so I'm going to save this one select menu save this selection and I'm gonna call it stone structure and click OK all right, that's, now where did it save these selections? Let's go to our channels. Select it, look at this. Background and stone structure. Let's start with the background. In fact, let's hit our RGB composite, Command or Control D to deselect. And what I like to do is start to modify the background just a little bit. Now, I wanna make one more selection for the foreground elements. Let's go ahead and do that since we're already here. Make it larger and holding option, drag it, and let's go ahead and select it. It did a pretty good job, pretty close to what we needed. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. Option, right click and hold. And let's go ahead and add to this. All right, there it is. Option key to pull it back along these edges. It looks pretty good. It's kind of double click and inspect everything else that's not bad good alright so let's go ahead and zoom down move it down just a bit and we can see everything has been selected let's save that selection save the selection and we're gonna call it foreground alright let's go ahead and command and control D now let's go back to find out where it saved these selections. It saved them right here on the channels. It saved them as an alpha channel. This represents the white areas are the areas that are being selected, the black areas that are being masked out. So that means this one represents my background. This one represents the actual stone structure. And this one down here represents the foreground information. So since Photoshop the key to mastering Photoshop is selections and selections and mass are exactly the same thing that means I should be able to turn a selection or create a selection from this mask let's go ahead and do it hold the command or control key on your keyboard and click and release and you automatically gives you the selections around your background now let's go to command or control once again L for levels and let's Let's go ahead and, and hide my selection, Command or Control H, and go to my mid-tone information. I don't want to increase the contrast for the background because I want I don't want it to compete with my my foreground object. There it is. So I've brought down the the detail in the in the background. And I guess what I'd like to do next is and I hit cancel by accident. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control L bring it down that looks good and click OK alright so when we come back I'm going to continue to modify our primary subject and the foreground we're gonna blur out the background so that the primary subjects is really gonna be popping forward